Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be adding ambient lighting and making our render engine a lot more efficient. So we'll start off with the ambient lighting and I'm just going to go ahead and run the code from last week's tutorial. So I'm rendering the stool model here and you can see that the areas of the model that don't have any diffuse lighting are actually completely black which we probably wouldn't want. Ambient lighting adds a small amount of light to every part of the model, making sure that no part of the model is completely black, and that's what we're going to add now. There are a load of ways that we could do this, but the way that we're going to do it is a way that someone actually mentioned in one of the comments in a previous tutorial, and it's actually a pretty nice way to do it, so that's what we're going to do. In the fragment shader, when we calculate the brightness of the diffuse light, we made sure that it wasn't lower than zero. But if we change that to a slightly higher value like 0.2, then it makes sure that the brightness never drops below 0.2, and therefore it will always be a little bit light. And if we run that, you can see that it works nicely, and it looks a lot better. On to the next thing now, and I'll run this again and render the dragon model this time. Now, if I can manage to move the camera inside of the dragon, you can see that the other side of the dragon is also being rendered, as you might expect. But this is kind of pointless. These are faces that are pointing away from the camera, and so would never normally be seen if the camera wasn't inside the model. There's no point rendering triangles whose normals point away from the camera, and we can improve rendering times if we don't render them, so let's implement that now. In the renderer class, in the constructor, we need to add two lines that will stop triangles facing away from the camera from being rendered, and that is glenable glcurlface, and then we choose which faces to cull, and that is GL back, because we want to cull, or not render, the back faces of the model. So let's run that and have a look inside the model to see if that has worked, and you can see that the inside of the dragon is no longer being rendered. So, moving on, I've got a little rendering scenario set up here with these cube models, and what I've done is I've loaded up a cube model and I've given it a texture, and I've got a list of entities here which is going to hold all the cubes. I'm going to loop around 200 times creating 200 entities, all of which are entities of the cube model, and they're all going to be positioned at random places. Then in the loop I've just gone through this list of entities, or list of cubes, and I've rendered all of them, and that gives me something like this, 200 cubes rendered onto the screen in random places and with random rotations. And that's all fine and well, but if we have a look in the rendering class, the render class, in the render method, there are a few problems with this. This render method is going to be called 200 times every frame, once for each cube. For every single cube, this method will bind the cube model, bind the cube texture, load up the shine settings, and then unbind all of that. And it will do this 200 times, every time binding exactly the same model and exactly the same texture and loading exactly the same values to the shader, because all of the cubes are using the exact same textured model. It would obviously be so much more efficient to bind the model and texture for the cubes once and then render all of the cubes, instead of binding and unbinding the same data 200 times every single frame. And that's what we're going to be implementing in this episode. So let's create a new class in the render engine package, and it's going to be called Master Renderer, and this is going to handle all of the rendering code in our game. So this is going to need its own static shader, so let's create an instance of the static shader class here. And it's also going to need a renderer to do the rendering. So let's create a new renderer called Renderer, and call the constructor which takes in the shader. We're now going to create a hash map containing all of the textured models and their respective entities that need to be rendered for a particular frame. If you've not used hash maps before, then I suggest you quickly read up about them first, otherwise this might be a bit confusing, but if you've used them before then this will be really easy. So I'm going to create a hash map that will contain a load of textured model keys, and each of them will be mapped to a list of the entities that use that specific textured model. So we'll basically have a list of all the entities for each textured model that's going to be rendered. And the hash map will therefore look something like this. Now, seeing as we're going to be handling all the shader code in here, we need to have a method to clean up, because the shader always needs to be cleaned up at the end when we close the game. Uh, and this cleanup method is simply going to do shader.cleanup. Next, we need to add another public method, and this is going to be the render method that will be called once every frame, and it will render all the entities in the scene. 
and this will take in the light which is basically going to be the sun for us and the camera first thing it has to do is to prepare the renderer renderer.prepare then it has to do shader.start like we always do then we're going to load up the light to the shader just as we usually do and then we're going to do shader.load view matrix and that will take in the camera these are just all things that we have always done in the main game loop but we're going to move them into here and after we've rendered which we're going to put in that gap we call shader.stop and we have to clear the hash map of entities and you have to remember to do that otherwise the entities will just build up and up and up every frame and you'll be ending up rendering millions of entities and that's not good let's now go into the renderer class and the first thing we want to do here is to create uh, a class attribute for the static shader and just set that in the constructor so that we can access that static shader whenever we want and now we're going to create a new render method here we're going to delete the old one in a bit and we're going to create a new render method that we're always going to use and this is going to take in that map that hash map of textured models and lists of entities that we just created in the master renderer class and just import that and we're going to break this render method down into a few different steps so let's create a couple of methods here one is going to prepare all the textured models and that will take in the textured model that it needs to prepare for rendering we also need to have a method that can unbind the textured model once we've finished rendering all the entities that use that textured model and that will do all the unbinding and we also need to have a method that prepares the instances or the entities of each of these textured models so after preparing the textured model we'll then prepare all of the entities and render all of the entities that use that textured model so we'll fill those in those methods in in a minute let's just go into the render method and set that up a bit so we're going to loop through all of the keys in that hash map all of the textured models and for each textured model we first need to prepare the textured model obviously and then we're going to get all of the entities that use that textured model by calling entities.get and putting in the textured model then for each of these entities in this batch we need to prepare the entity so we call prepare instance and put in the entity and then we want to do the final render in that place there once we've rendered all of the entities for that textured model we can unbind that textured model and it will then loop back to the next textured model so let's now fill in the prepare textured model method and we're going to get all of the stuff out of the old render method that we need to do for each model so that is going to include binding the model and enabling all of those vertex attrib arrays also we're going to need to do the shader stuff uh, for the texture just the texture stuff so getting the texture loading the shine variables binding the texture and so on that's those four lines also need to be done for each textured model then to unbind a textured model we just need to call those four lines here the disabling the attrib arrays and also unbinding the vertex array now let's do the prepare for each entity and all we do for that is to create the transformation matrix and load that up to the shaders that's the only thing we've ever done per entity and then the final thing we need is the render method that final render method and that will go in there just after we've prepared each instance and we just need to change this to use model.get raw model and that is all now done in the render class so let's go back to the master renderer and we can now call that new render method in the renderer and send it all of the entities in the hash map entities so before we forget let's go back into the renderer class and delete our old render method which we don't want to use anymore because we've got the fancy new one back in the master renderer now what we need to do is to create a method that can actually put entities into this hash map they need to be sorted in every frame all the entities that are going to be rendered need to be sorted into the correct list in this hash map so let's create a new method called process entity which will take in the entity that's going to be processed then we first need to find out which textured model that entity is using by doing entity.get model and then we'll get the list that corresponds to that entity from the hash map 
by doing entities.get and then putting in the entity model. If a batch for that particular textured model already exists, and we can check that by doing batch is not equal to null, if it's not equal to null then a batch already exists and we can add the entity straight to that batch. However, if there are no batches for this particular textured model then we need to create a new batch for that textured model. So we create a new list of entities which we'll call new batch, uh, new array list, and then we can add our entity to that new batch and then we have to add that batch to the hash map. So we add the entity to the map, uh, to the batch and then we put this into the hash map. Now into the main game loop, a few things we've got to change here. Let's get rid of everything that has the old renderer and the old shader in there. So get rid of anything that has renderer or shader because we don't want to handle any of that code in here anymore. Once you've got rid of that you can create the master renderer in here which is going to handle all of that render code for us. Let's create a new master renderer and try and import that if Eclipse allows me. There we go. And before we forget we have to remember to clean it up once the game has closed. So after the while loop do renderer.cleanup and then in the while loop once a frame we call the render method which takes in the sun and the camera. Finally for any entity that you want to render every frame you have to call the renderer.processEntity method and put in the entity that you want to render and you have to do that for every single entity that you want to render. So if I go ahead and run that it should all look exactly the same as it did before but it will have made a huge amount of difference to the efficiency of our render engine and that is something that will be extremely important in the future. If you look in the render class, this method, all of the code here, is being called only once a frame in this example, instead of 200 times like it was before, and that will make a big difference. And that is it for this tutorial. Not the most exciting of tutorials ever, I have to admit, but every bit as important as the other ones. Next week we'll be doing something a bit more interesting, as we'll be giving our engine the ability to render terrain, and we'll be testing that out with a simple flat terrain. If you haven't seen yesterday's devlog video yet, then a link to that is on the screen now. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a lovely week, and I will see you all next time.